know, a lot of people always say that getting married, men lose in marriage. Absolutely not. They, they say it all Absolutely the time. They not. say men lose in marriage. They say men don't gain nothing from That's marriage. That's not true. You gain you. How? The greatest version of who you will be is when you steward a household and do it well. Talk about it. The greatest version of any man is when you, you don't know your capacity until you had to manage other people's lives. <clears throat> you don't know who you are, right? And so you think you can manage it. You think you can handle it until you have other people who are counting on you to pay the bills, to show up, watch it, to be stable emotionally when all hell's breaking. Yes. Loose. To have a pandemic hit and you don't know what the hell you're going to yes. do. Yes. And you still have to lead these people. Yes. That's when you know who you are. Yes. We put porn to shame. <laughs> isn't just about where I give Talk birth to about babies. It. Talk. The womb is about where we give birth to purpose. Talk! I was basically all of her nevers. I never imagined my journey would inspire people all over the world. You have set a standard in love. I was dating a young lady who helped me heal. Wow. This woman is a ride or die. The conversations have really helped me to change my perspective on relationships. I had 19 attorneys at one time that were speaking into my ear. 19, 19 attorneys. Attorney. My, my, my last relationship, you know, they did a number on me. What you did not know is I had a whole little situation lined up that evening. Your transparency is literally setting people free. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Um, thank you. I received that. Let one of them Barbie doll bodies walk over here. He gonna say, Dear future wifey. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're gonna go right in that box. <laughs> I'm Lataris R. Whitfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lataris R. Whitfield. Listen, before we get started, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, come on. Can we just get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Man, season five has been amazing, hasn't it? Ah, well, today we're going to get a little deeper. I got my brother. See, I, get, I have an extra affinity towards my brothers when they come on the podcast. And so without further ado, welcome the sensational, my homie, David Burris. How you doing, brother? I'm great, brother. Thank you for having me. Dave, let me, man, let me tell you, it's an honor to have you on this podcast. Likewise. Man, let me tell you something. I learned about you. I learned about you um, back in 2020 from my my uh, my homie, uh, Donisha Reed. Yes, sir. And she was telling me, she said, I have to, we were on the phone one day and she had to jump off a call to meet with her mentor. And um, she told me about the David Burris uh, Academy. Yes, sir. And so, uh, you know what? We're going we're gonna to talk about that in a little bit. But what I brought you on to talk about is our role as men, our role as husbands when we take on that title. And so today's episode is going to be affectionately titled Define Husband. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm scared. I know it. We get we going and now we may step on some toes now I'm scared. because when we start talking about these roles, you know, it may be some trigger points to a lot of men. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Are you OK with that? I'm scared. Okay, you scared. Yeah, but I'm but, excited. But we will, you know, on the podcast, we keep it lit. We live intentionally and transparently. I love it. All right, so we're going we gonna, we gonna to deal with some stuff. Love it. So when you hear the word husband, um, no, first of all, let me ask you, how long have you been married? I've been married 19 years. 19 years. So you have, you have a lot to say about. I do. You have a lot to say about what a wife is or more so what a husband is? Both. More so what a husband is. Um, what I'm finding is that when I find out what a husband is, who she is will appear. Hold on. Hold on. You said that when you find out what a husband is, then who she is will appear. It'll appear. Yeah. Why do you say that? Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm Adam, right? So I'm here first. And so I've got to find out who I am because whoever I am is going to come out of me, not to me. <laughs> All right. So he's going to start like that. Okay. Listen, I looked up the etymology of the word husband. And as I looked up uh, the word husband, and we talked about this before on the podcast, the word husband is defined as an, it's, a, it's an old English word mm. comes from the word husbanda, which means male head of household, yes, the sir. master of a house, the householder. I love that word householder. Yeah. I'm going to stop right there. When you hear the word householder referred to as a husband, what comes to mind? Yeah, even that word husband, uh, you know, another way of looking at it is a husband or house band. Yes. The man that holds it all together, right? And so our role as the husband is to hold it together. 
And I, I think a house that doesn't have a house band is a house that is really in dismay. And so it's, it's critical for us to be there to hold it down and hold it together. But how do we reverse engineer this problem? A lot of men have grown up in fatherless homes. Uh, did you grow up with a father present in the home? I didn't. I grew up no father. However, my mother was intentional about planting me in the presence of great men. So she I, was. Oh yeah, brother. I I was around Suspenders and Stacey Adams. My really? Mother. Oh yeah, brother. Yeah. So so where so where'd you grow up? I'm from the Bay Area, a city called Richmond, California. Richmond. Yeah. I did plays in Richmond before. Did you? Yeah. A lot of my I used to do uh, touring shows as a national playwright director really? producer, and we've gone through Richmond before. And you made it out. Yeah, I made it out a yeah. lot. Yeah, made it out a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> made out alive. So that's where I'm from, man. So a lot of strong black men around me. I grew up in church. So, you know, I just saw I saw good men. And so I had no excuse. When we talk uh, to a certain uh, generation, church has been very pivotal in our upbringing. Absolutely. How important was church for you? It was critical, man, um, for two things, for the spiritual aspect of it, of course. But, man, I, j just to be around other, again, strong black men. You know, I grew up, I'm 47, so I grew up in an era where, where men and women were married, whether yeah. they wanted to be or not, right? <laughs> they were married. And so I saw what, what men and women could do when they worked together, and uh, it really blessed my life. Why say whether they wanted to? <laughs> Brother, they stayed together whether they wanted to or not. They, he, she knew, she knew he was down the street. <laughs> she knew. Yeah. But, yeah. They, but she stayed, right? And so I saw what longevity looks like in marriage. A lot of times people, uh, I had an episode um, where... A couple where the lady in the relationship said, I would have stayed married to him for 50 years and been miserable. Of course. Um, so when you talk about what we saw, those couples that were able to get to that, do we part or whatnot? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about that? Do you feel like that was toxic love? I do. Yeah, absolutely. So so when you think about marriage, there are two types of marriage. When we stand at the altar, he's going to say, do you take this man? Do you take this woman until death do us part? Right. The part we miss is is he, what he doesn't say he should say is unto death right until means forever until we die but unto means every day there's an aspect of me that has to die to be with you and so we have done until our entire lives but we have missed out on the unto if that hold, on, hold on hold on hold on no that's got to just sit there we're gonna let that just marinate right there who jesus David, if that makes sense. David, oh, yeah, it makes sense. Oh, it makes sense. We just go, okay, okay, unto. Unto death, yeah. Man, I had my buddy, Pastor Tim Ross, on here, and it says Genius. at the altar. Yes, he Genius. says death happens at the altar. It happens. He says, so when you think about marriage and you're saying these beautiful I do's, and he said you can dress up an altar any way you want to. You can put beautiful flowers at, at, at you know in the front of it. You can have the flower girl walk down, but it's still an altar, and at the altar is always death. It's always death. When I stand at the altar, we're going to stand together as I'm going to stand there as Dave. Yep. My wife stood there as Tanisha. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the two become one. So I left as us. Yes. Right? So I had to, Dave, he's, he's no more. He's, he had to lay at the altar. And I think sometimes we still want to leave with life and we can't. You got to leave with death. 19 years of marriage. How long did it take you to grasp that ideology? 19 years. <laughs> <laughs> 19 years. Yeah, I'm still grasping it, man. It's, no one wants to die. Yeah, right? And so I'm having to learn how to die every day. And it's a challenge. So what was the biggest challenge? So you got married at, I don't want to do no I'm math. I'm to get in trouble. Yeah, I'm trying to do 20, 19, just carry the one, subtract from two. I got married at 28. <laughs> you got married at 28, the same yes. age I was when I got married. Yes. And ugh, well, when, I th when I was 28, I thought I knew so much. Brother. I, oh, I thought I knew. Yeah. I thought I knew so much that the people who married us, they thought they thought we did too. They didn't even counsel us, and so we got married and we found out. I don't know anything <laughs> about marriage or manhood, for that matter. So, what was the biggest lesson? What was what was the first defining moment that made you realize that something ain't right? I need to fix me. Um, when I realized that for man, uh, it, manhood is unfair. Yeah, when I found out that it's never going to be fair, it's always going to be unfair, unbalanced. When I grasp that, I stop expecting things of her that she couldn't give. Oh, gosh. Okay, hold on. So now you're saying that you got to lower your expectation of, of your wife? Of course. It's not even lower my expectation of her. It's raise my expectation of myself. There's a difference.
right? So if I lower my expectation of her, I expect nothing, right? Uh, but when I raise my expectation of myself, she can remain the same. I have to level up. I look at the relationship between Christ and his church. He, he leveled up. He literally raised himself on the cross to die, right? So he was suspended above us, expecting more of himself than those that were down here to observe it. David, now I'm telling you right now, and I know you say you were scared at the very beginning, but you need to be very afraid. I because, am. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a community of men. I know. And they know the red pill community and the manosphere who put the honest on the women and say the women are the problem. If women did this, then men could do that. And you just said something that, 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 that makes a, a huge shift it's in responsibility. Totally incorrect. It's not her responsibility. It's mine. He said this. He said, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and said. gave himself for her. Yes. He also said this. While ye were yet sinners, I died, which means that I can't wait till you're right for my death. I've got to do it, it because you're wrong. My death has to be because you're wrong. Right. I have to die more when she's at her worst. I become most like Christ when she's at her worst. Having said that, I couldn't become a Christian until his cross. So the woman that these guys are complaining about will not show up until you die. Oh, God. She's not going to come. You can beg, plead, threaten until you die, sir. She will not show up. David, what happened in your marriage to first give you that jolt to, for you to say, hey, I have to die? I was begging my wife to do things and pleading and staying up at night crying because she wouldn't. Give me an example. The people uh, need reference around yeah, here. Let's, so let's talk even sexually. Yeah. Right? So begging for it. Um, <clears throat> and what I realized is, man, I wasn't creating a climate where she would be open to it. Right? So I'm begging for something, but I'm not introducing the climate. So when I, when I, I had to die first and make it about her first, and when I made it about her, the Bible says it this way, we love him because he first loved us. That's what it said. Yeah. So I had to love her first for her to love me back. I couldn't wait on her to initiate that. It's an example that, and it hit me, this year is, well, December comes around, it'd be seven years uh, from my divorce. Mm. And God taught me this, like, I, cause I always go back and I reverse engineer and be like, where were my problems area, yes, areas? I can point out all the things wrong with my ex-wife, but then I always take, you know, as I'm going through this healing journey, what did I do wrong? And God brought to my remembrance a feather story. Mm. My ex-wife came home one day and I, and I used to always complain that we wouldn't have sex. And I'd be like, gosh, I feel like I said, I was going to write a book called, I started masturbating once I got married. Jesus. Cause I never masturbated a day in my life until I said I do. And I said, something, well, hold on. something ain't Dude, right. I didn't know this was the part. We, are you serious? Oh yeah. We're going to talk. Okay. okay. Uh, hold I on, David. Uh, no, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. You, said, you mentioned it before. But I said, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. Not King, you said it before, but I kind of took it. We go, oh no, we're gonna go there. Okay. We're gonna go there. Okay. So I started masturbating once I got married. And I said, so then uh my ex-wife used to always say that I had this unhealthy relationship with sex. Mm. And I was like, because she wasn't, you know, experimenting, didn't have you know, only been with one guy before we got married. And me, that's not my testimony. So so she was like, You have an unhealthy idea about marriage. I'm like, no, you you got a problem. You just don't want to have sex. Yeah, you. So we get married and um I felt like she was rationing the sex. And I was like, oh, you just finna control the sex King. like that. You finna struggle. You finna make me struggle. And I'm finna be uh, abstinent while we married. Like, what, what is this King. about? So one day she came home with a feather. She came home with the feather. And she said, here, here, use this feather on me. I was like, here she is. Like, one, here's another obstacle. Feather. Yeah, a feather. I said, what am I going to do with this feather? Yeah. She said, just rub it on me. Just rub it on my body. Yeah. And at first I did it and I was doing it all begrudgingly. I'm rubbing it all on it. I'm just oh, painting so stupid. It's taking too long. Yeah, I'm over here painting with yeah. the dang thing. This is some nonsense. This is goofy. This don't even make sense. Yeah. And um, God reminded me of that moment in 2022 about my selfishness in that wow. moment because it wasn't about me. Wow. That that feather represented take time with me. Wow. I know you used to just go your, your, your foreplay hits different, you know. Yeah. I want you to take your time. I want something as soft as a feather touching my body. I want you to caress me. I want you to literally make love to yeah. me and not just have sex with me. And and I was like, God hit me with that. I was like, why'd you take so long to give me that? Yeah. It's because now I'm in the posture of receiving. Yeah. I'm in the I'm in the mindset and the attitude to say God make me better 
better for my future wife. That's good. And so when you look at that example, when you said that, hey, you were trying to force her to, quote unquote, uh, give you more sex. What transpired that made you say, let me try a different approach? Just I mean, I cracked that word open. Right. I cracked the word open. And if you look at Ephesians five and read it in the message Bible, it says that a husband's love is defined by giving, not getting. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His gift to us demanded a return from us. So for a man, it, you have to give something, sir. She doesn't feel safe with you. Right. If you're making it about you, why should she feel safe with you? When you show up and say, I, I'm showing up every morning, man, my, my thing, I wake up every day and ask myself, how can I lighten this woman's load Ooh. every morning? What can I do today to lighten her load? So when I show up like that, man, I'm not a romantic dude. Right. But when I show up like that, Bible says it this way mm. uh, in Ephesians five, he says, man, a man, uh, a, a man doesn't he, he pampers himself, doesn't he? So when I when I read that, what I realized, man, is that I I don't have to be romantic if I'm just like Christ. That's romantic enough, right? So if I would do for her what I would do for myself, that means if I'm going to take a bath, I'll run hers too. Woo! Right? If I'm going to make my meal, if I'll prepare my plate, I've got to do it for her too. So now this looks like romance. It's not. It's actually kingdom, right, bottled up in, in service. And so I don't have any feathers yet, but I'm going to get some... <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go kill a bird. Just you're gonna like kill a bird. Feathers you're all gonna, you're gonna chase long. an ostrich down the street. Uh, down the street. I'm doing it. Kid. Yeah, I'm going to get the feathers now. You just turn me on or something. <laughs> turn you on or something. You don't even know. Don't I'm even... getting back to California. It's gonna be feathers. It's gonna be... Yeah, it's gonna be feathers. Feathers are coming. Hopefully, she won't see this before the feathers come. <laughs> They coming. They come. Yeah, they coming. So tell me, as you've been on this journey, you've been 19 years into it. What 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 are some other obstacles that you had to learn as a man to show up as the best householder? Um, again, servitude, man, and sacrifice, and again that unfair piece. Yeah, talk uh, about unfair because when 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 men hear that. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be like, oh no, that 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 don't make sense. Sure. Like, there's nothing about being unfair because we live in this just society. Sure. Everything is supposed to be justifiable. Sure. There's justice, you know, where um, in a crime is committed towards somebody, we are able to point out things that justice didn't show up in. That's right. So that's not gonna go over well. They, that's just that's just people ain't gonna like that. It's not. But look, so so you gotta understand. You yeah. gotta you gotta unpack that where we can understand people who are just saying I do this year mm -hmm. as a husband and they're caught up in this wedded bliss and then they go hold on I just signed up for something that's unfair. No, nah, that unfair. that don't seem right. Yeah. What they don't realize, most men don't realize, is when you were born, it was unfair. How? It, it's not marriage. It's life as a man. It's unfair. We are called to lead. Leadership is servitude. Servitude is always unfair. It's always, you cannot be a great leader without being a great servant. You cannot be a great servant and keep things fair. It's impossible. It has to be unfair. But the more unfair it is, the greater I become as a leader. Period. So the more I serve and the more unfair it is and the more I say, no, it's about you. It's not about me. I become greater as a leader. She becomes more trusting as a leader. I had this experience on Father's Day. You know, Mother's Day is a lot of hoopla around. You know, they All the day. commercials hit differently for Mother's All Day. Day. People buying gifts like crazy. Father's Day would be like Father's Day. Yeah. And I even experienced that as as a father. Mother's Here, Day, every kiss begins with K. <laughs> Father's Day is gift card. McDonald's two for one. You might get some you might get an apron Maybe. for your grill or something. Yeah. You know, and I was like, this is crazy. But then this past Father's Day hit me a little different because I was like, here I, I adopted my nephew. I adopted this young King Armani. Wow. Uh, my daughter is 26 years old. I've done everything for her growing up. And then Father's Day, we were talking and they didn't do nothing for me. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm on my grill grilling for my sons on Father's Day and they sitting wow. up there playing video games. And I wow. said, am I doing something wrong as a father where I wow. make y'all feel like y'all can not appreciate me on Father's Day too? Like, what what is this about? And then God began to minister to me, which I hate, but he began right. to minister to me. He was like, you're still serving. You're still serving. And I was like, but one day they got to get this because this, 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 ain't, this ain't fair. And that's why when you said it's not fair, it hit with me. And I had a conversation with my daughter and my daughter said, um, 
because I talked to her that morning. And I said, um, are you coming to the house? She said, well, I got to work on my, my, my uh, she's doing some classes for college. Mm -hmm. And she said, I got to work on this assignment. And then I said, um, well, you could have did that yesterday. She's like, well, yesterday I went on this little quick road trip with my mom. And I was like, so I'm just, I'm going to sacrifice the fact that you went out with your mom on Saturday and then on Father's Day, you can't come drive over here and do this for me. And I just uh, put a down payment on a brand new Jeep, uh, whatever vehicle she just got uh, the month before. And I was like, and she was just like, well, yeah, I mean, I, okay, I'll try to come. And then later on, she said, I just can't. I got to finish this assignment. I said, yeah. okay, all right. Yeah. And so we talked about it about a month and a half later. And uh, she's like, well, I didn't think it was a big deal. I was like, how? How was Father's Day? Not a big deal. Not a big deal. But here's the thing. That's why they wonder why when we get a little sniffle, a little cough, we act like it's cancer. <laughs> right? You you give me a little cough, uh, it's it's terminal. I'm done for the month. That's because I only get attention on Father's Day <laughs> and when I get my birthday and when I got a little cold. So I'm I'm you a, gonna, I'm gonna, a gonna, sneeze. You gonna yeah. sneeze? Yeah. yeah. So I can get some attention. Yes, sir. It's, it's, it's facts. So what do you think men should do? Since it's unfair, how do we deal with those tough times? Deal with those times where um, we're not praised as much as sure. we would hope. Because men, a lot of men, we lean towards words of affirmation. And any type of affair that typically happens is going to come from a man getting words of affirmation from someone else outside of his wife. If his wife's mm -hmm. not uh, doing that job. So uh, how, do you, how do you encourage us to weather through those storms? So, man, when I read in the word where it says he who desires to be great must be servant of all. He who desires to be first must be your slave. I read that and it messed me up. And what I realized is that I've got to create my own reward system. Mm. I can't wait on you to celebrate me as a man. It's it's because it, it, it you're, you're not going to do it. <laughs> right. So I've got to, I've got to celebrate myself. And what I had to do, man, was identify the fact that my my servitude leads to my greatness. Right. So. Whether you thank me or not, I am working toward my own greatness and I celebrate myself for the work I'm doing. I don't need you to do it. I would appreciate it. It would be nice. But, but can't that easily turn into animosity and resentment? It could. Um, but then I have to take on the mind of Christ. Right. Um, we don't praise him as no, enough. Yeah. We don't celebrate him enough. And he still breathes in us the breath of life. He's not, he has no animosity toward us. He will wait. Pay, he's such a gentleman. He'll wait on you to celebrate it. And if you never do it, he's not going to force it. Right. So we have to really think like Christ. I mean, that's just the bottom line. If you try to do this in your own mindset, King is going to, you're going to fail. You will commit suicide. Trying yeah. to do this. You have yeah. to really take on the mind of Christ. Crack that word open and get Ooh, your prayer. Lord Jesus. All right. All right. Let's, let's go look at this other thing. It said that, um, which is really interesting. The verb, form of husband mm. means to manage thriftily in an obsolete sense of steward. Mm -hmm. So when you think of a husband being a steward, which is a lot of stuff that you're talking about being a servant mm -hmm. and being a good steward over the things that he has dominion over. Let's unpack that. The verb sense. If you're a husband. Stewardship is always about increase, Right. Stewardship is anytime you steward something, God is giving you an opportunity to prove that you can have more. And so when I steward my house, what I'm saying is, God, I can handle more. I can handle more. So now what that does is it takes the onus off of them. This is not even about y'all. This is about me and my relationship with God. I'm stewarding this for me. You are the beneficiary of my stewardship. Which means now I take onus. I don't look to you to celebrate me. I steward this because I need more from God. Mm. Does that make sense? It makes a whole lot of sense, but it's, it's making me emotional. <laughs> it's making me emotional. It's making, what am I looking forward to if I get married? I'm just losing. You know, a lot of people always say that getting married, men lose in marriage. Absolutely not. They, they say it all Absolutely the time. They not. say men lose in marriage. They say men don't gain nothing from That's marriage. That's not true. You gain you. How? The greatest version of who you will be is when you steward a household and do it well. Talk about it. The greatest version of any man is when you, st you don't know your capacity until you had to manage other people's lives. <clears throat> you don't know who you are. Right. And so you think you can manage it. You think you can handle it. 
until you have other people who are counting on you to pay the bills, to show up. Watch it to be stable emotionally when all hell's breaking. Yes. To have a pandemic hit and you don't know what the hell you're going to yes. do. Yes. And you still have to lead these people. Yes. That's when you know who you are. Yes. When I say you hit the nail on the head, we went through uh, 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 Dallas, what do they call it? Dalaska. Mm. Went to Dalaska uh, last last year where we hit the greatest snowstorm mm, ever. And there was yeah. a freeze and all this. And I had to move my mom out of her apartment yes, where I pay all the bills for. I had to move her from that because it was a water pipe, a pipe that uh, burst upstairs. And then I had to move the same time. So it was like, and then I have these these offspring yep. that I didn't that you produce, didn't birth. That I didn't birth. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm sitting up here and I'm like, what in the world? But what was so cool about, and I thank God for my upbringing, I grew up poor. Mm. So that wasn't, you know, when they was talking about bird baths, you know, I had a little water. I, I, I took some water from my office, from my, my, my water uh, system or whatever, took that. Big old jug, five gallon jug of water, poured into a pot, boiled the water because we still had electricity, and I'll just take my little wash offs. And I and I and in those moments, I was like, God, thank you for when I grew up poor. Thank you. Where we had to do that all the time. Thank I said, you. God, I thank you for finding value in me way back then to put some seeds in my soul to where this moment didn't break me. Yep. And then I was able to teach my sons. I was like, man, let me tell you this. Like, well, so what do we do? How we take a bath? I was like, man, just go boil some water. Go do this. Yes, mix sir. that with that. Go stand yes, there and get soap. And then what? I was like, ah, oh, y'all kids just don't yeah. know that. And wash yourself. <laughs> stand in the tub. Get a soap bar of soap and wash yourself. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Well, can I just fill the water up, fill the tub up? No, that's too much. <laughs> you can't be using yeah, all that water on a, on a bath. Yeah. No, wash off. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, okay. But but you stewarded that moment. Yes. Right. You're a great man. First of all, I want to say I celebrate you. To to walk your family through that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, brother. I celebrate you, King. We don't get th we don't get thank you enough. But I I because I know what that means, and I know what that took. Thank you. What does that mean? What does that mean? Man, that means that I I may lose I may lose sleep. Yes. Yeah. I may not have what I want. It means I got to figure it out, right? It means I have to, I may have a headache. Mm -hmm. It means I don't know what I'm gonna do. I got to. It means I may have to take a drive, right? It means a lot of things. Yeah. It means things that you can't express. Yeah. Right. And so to not hear thank you, that's hard. And the fact that we had that I I had no other choice but to come up with a solution. You have to. Have there to. There is no choice. No choice. And, no and I was stuck. What happened was I was shooting a Valentine's Day uh, concert, a virtual concert for Kenny Lattimore and Faith. Mm. And um, when it happened, my flight got canceled and I was stuck. And mm -hmm. I felt so less than a man because I was in L.A. in the beautiful weather of L.A. And my family was struggling and yes, suffering sir. and there's nothing I could do about yes, it. Sir. And I would sit there and I was like, I didn't want to go nowhere. I just wanted to sit in my room because I, I stayed at their house. I wanted to just stay in the room and just and just sulk and suffer. And then I was like, God was like, no, keep moving, keep living, keep doing this. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And as soon as I got a flight that was out, then I, you know, I hit the ground and I was running. I picked up one of my sons and I was like, here, let's, let, let's talk about this. Yep. Uh, and, and how do you feel right now? And had them unpack his emotions. And a lot of them were just like, Ain't no big deal. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was yeah. just like, well, we just, you know, are we yeah. running out of food? Is it because you couldn't get to the grocery store? It was, it was bad. Like we've been through a lot of traumatic events over the last two years as a country, as a nation, outside of just COVID, but all this other stuff. Now we got monkeypox and you know, just all, just all kind of crazy stuff that's playing on the psychology of us. I can't do this podcast again, bro. This is not gonna work for me. Well, ain't gonna work. I'm trying to hold my laugh in. <laughs> laugh, laugh. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm tr this is not gonna work for me. Do you know you, you? I heard you. I heard your son say this is no big deal. Yeah, they were only able to say that because you are still alive. Oh, had you had you not been alive, it would have been a big deal. That's but, good. But they have a man who's been through it before. That's who can, good. Who can walk them through it, and they just feel safe. That's right? good. You don't have that luxury. Nah. You know, you know what that means? It's unfair. Hmm. <laughs> it's always unfair. They haven't reached unfair yet, but they will. Ooh. Every man reaches unfair. You live long enough, you, you will discover unfair. Ladies, we don't mean anything by it. Just that's, 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 that's good. That's good. And the whole time I'm over, it's like, oh, I got to do this. Let me go figure out this. Oh, I got to move into another uh, apartment. That apartment's charging more for rent. Yes, sir. I got to figure that out. Now I got to go up another $300 a month. And I'm like, 
All this in your mind. Yeah. And all this, you can't tell nobody. Nah, just got to figure it out. You got to figure it out. Yeah, that's unfair. I'm going to keep bringing it back, King. <laughs> it's unfair. It's unfair. <laughs> it's unfair. It's, it's, but it's still, it's just though. It's just because God rewards, every, you cannot do anything like that and not be rewarded by the king. It's impossible. So it's very just, but it's unfair at the same time. Mm. God is always about justice. And if I'm ever going through something that seems unfair, there is justice somewhere. I just have to live long enough to receive it. So when you think of 19 years old, I mean, 19 years in, in a marriage and you're still figuring out and you're still dying daily and you're yeah. still dealing with that, uh, put context around that. Why haven't you just gotten it and accepted the fact that it's unfair and you're just happy being whatever? Yeah. We have this notion that balance means I stand still and things, I can balance things by standing still. Balance is not standing still. Balance is adjusting to the movements. There will always be adjusting to the movement, right? So you never get it. You never obtain balance. You always have to adjust. Now, the key to balance is holding fast to the center point. If I'm too left or too right, everything will fall. And so as a man, I'm always seeking what's the center. God, where are you in this? So that while things are always adjusting, they won't ever be still. I'm always changing. She will always be changing. They will always be changing. Life will always be changing. Monkey pox this year. Feather pox next year. It's always going to be something. So as a man, I've got to always be centered. I cannot be emotional. Sir, whoever's listening, you don't have room to be emotional. Talk to him right there. You Talk can't, sir. You. I don't care if that woman is... On all 10 roller coasters up and down throughout the day, you, sir, have to remain balanced so that you can stay centered because you have to, as the king of your home, you have to balance all of this so that you won't ever arrive. If you're thinking one day you will arrive, you will not. There is no arrival. There's always the journey. When people hear the word, <clears throat> the statement you made about men don't have room to be emotional. Sure. I want you to unpack that because you have a lot of men that's going through marriage numb. It was an episode that I did a couple of episodes ago where this guy asked him, how does he feel about his wife breaking down? Oh, Vincent. And he said, I feel nothing. Oh, he's, he's missing it. But he felt emotionless. He's going to kill himself and her. So let me retract that. If that's what I said, you, you don't have room to live out of emotion. Every man, you have to, be, you can't love a woman without being an emotional feeling being. Yeah. I live my years. You, do I have three minutes to tell you? A story? Oh, you come talk. You got plenty of time. I live my years numb because I was afraid of feeling. Most men are primarily because when you say years. I want to, I want to put context from what, from all the yeah, way up to what age? Um, well, we've been married 19 years. I spent the, 17 years. So these last two years, I've just start feeling. I haven't, Good. Felt, I haven't felt all of my life. 45 years. Two, 45 years old. I'm just feeling. Primarily because every man has a lion that's caged inside of him. Talk about it. And we fear that if we let him out, he will kill everybody in this room. Mm. Because we, we have not tamed him. He cannot be tamed. So part of why we're numb is because we don't want to kill you. Right. Part of why we walk out of the room, ma'am, when you go off is so that we don't, because we can't, that disrespect, I can't treat you like I would treat a man. Yes. And so I would rather walk away than take your head off your Yes. Neck, right? Yeah. Having said that, what I learned was I was numb. And every time my wife would cry, I would leave and say, get it together. I wouldn't say that physically, yeah. literally, but when you get it together, I'll be back and we can maybe discuss it. Yeah. And one day, Holy Spirit said, don't walk out, walk toward her. Talk about it. And King, I remember... Like Talk yesterday. about it. She was in the kitchen crying, something I had done. And I, I said, I'm going to walk toward her. And every step I took, I just began to weep. Till I got to the kitchen and we're both on the floor, sitting Indian style in tears. And from that moment on, I was able to feel her. And I stopped making stupid mistakes and decisions because now I feel what she would feel if I do that. All right. So you have to feel emotion, not live out of it. There's a difference. Ooh. When I say that right there is going to minister, that is going to minister to somebody and it's going to break the yoke I believe that. of stubbornness, the yoke of selfishness, the yoke of it's all about me. The yoke is you're too emotional. You yeah. need to get over it. No, you don't. Uh, all these lies that we put on the shoulders of women mm -hmm. and what you just spoke 
is the heart of what empathy is. Empathy is now mm-hmm. taking whatever emotion you're going through and I carry that thing. Here it is, householder. I'm holding your emotion now and now I'm operating in the spirit of empathy which now a woman is able to say, I feel safe with I you. I feel safe. I had a video that went viral, got 2.4 million views, a one minute video because I said the number one need for a woman is to feel safe and safety is this place of vulnerability where I say, a woman says, I can cry. Oh, Thank you, Holy Spirit. It goes all the way back to a baby crying. Mm. When a baby cries, and when you go and take care of that baby, whether it, and you start understanding the different, I love mothers and fathers grab along, uh, you know, they get that concept uh, a little slower than women. And later. Yep. Yeah, a little later. But when a baby cries, you're like, oh, uh, diaper is just dirty. Like, how you just, it's a cry. How you just know? Oh, uh, he or she hungry. Yeah. Like, but it's just a cry. How oh, that's, you know that's that rash? Yeah, that's, that's the, a little the rash, rash over there. I didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, the baby teething. You're like, hold on. This is the same day. The cry sound the same, but somehow you knew that this cry was because the baby teething. This cry is because the baby's diaper is dirty. This cry is the baby is hungry. This cry is the baby is sleepy. How in the world do you know this? It's because that mother is in tune with the sound of her child, sir. If we yes. can get that same. Yes. alignment and becoming in tuned with our women yes. then when she cries we say oh she just want to be embraced she want to be held when, when 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 she hollers or or gets mad or get throws a tantrum or whatever and we go and embrace her we go oh what she needs she, she's feeling vulnerable right now she just needs to know that she's safe right now yeah. that those words those cries those angers those tears that we understand how to meet the needs of our woman but it takes for us to be empathetic and it takes for us to be humble and be able to walk in the spirit of householder in order for that to be executed what I hear you saying is that emotions are the cheat code bottom line like if you're looking for sir how to do it because she's been asking for it yeah for years and you haven't known i keep trying i <laughs> i get the flowers you own. i mean i i i and you're wondering it's because you you can buy as many flowers as you you can buy the whole <laughs> the, the whole floor the whole floor <laughs> right you can buy all you can do all you can buy all the restaurants in the world but if you can't feel her you're gonna miss her mm. and she can feel when you can feel there it is yeah so and and so now when we do that, we can, oh, she's, I know why her, she got the long face. I know why, I know why, right? And so now you can identify and you can now get in front of it, all right? Most of us are trying to fix it from behind. Mm-hmm. But man, when I'm a fielder, I get in front of it, <laughs> right? And I can fix it from the front as a leader. And understand that that nothing really ju- doesn't mean nothing. It means when, everything. When, 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 when you ask her, uh, what's wrong? Nothing. Oh, that's that's everything. That's everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's everything. Let me yeah, go that's ahead. everything, King. Nothing for us is nothing. Like, no, I'm really okay. Yeah, I'm good. Right? I'm, no, I'm but good. No, nah, I was wrong. No, really, I just I'm I'm I just need some space. I just need yeah. some space. Yeah. <laughs> A woman be like nothing. You be like, uh oh, <laughs> what I do now? Yeah. Let me go unpack this. Yeah. Let me go ahead and There's get nothing. around that thing. Yeah, Let me get in the King. front of this thing. Yeah. And when you do meet her, when she doesn't have to say it, oh, yeah. it hits so differently. She yeah. be like, oh. Oh, you yes. know, man, you'll make, you'll make her melt like chocolate when you actually, yes. she says nothing and you come and put yourself in front be like, you know what? The way I talked to you earlier today. Yeah, that was not right. Yeah, that wasn't right the way. She'd be like, yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. I was hoping you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's over at that You know point. that? It's the equivalent of a feather. <laughs> it's the feather. Yeah, you're going to get off this feather yeah, now. No, I'm going to ride gonna, it. You're going to get off this feather. All right, I'm already it. convicted about this feather. I'm going to ride it, King. I'm going to ride it. <laughs> now, you're right, man. When we can get in front of it, man, and it, it just makes it easier. And again, so the things you're looking for from her will come from you first. Yes. It's not coming from her first. Yes. Right. 19 years. Um, was there any stage, any uh, time in your marriage where you want to throw in the towel? <laughs> I almost cussed, but when Texas on a Christian show. We're in the Bible Belt. We're in the, We're the Bible, Bible Belt. belt. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> Yeah, man, I don't want to go into too much detail because she's not here to tell her part of the story. But we have had at least six conversations where this is not going this. We got to figure something out. This is not it. Yeah. Right. And it's only the grace of God. When I say only the grace, there was nothing we done. It's only the grace of God. So how did y'all bounce back from those moments, those six moments, quote unquote, that you said, oh, we're going to go ahead. Th- these vows, we unpacked the marriage vows a couple of seasons ago. Mm. And this is that better for worse moment mm. right here. Uh, this is that uh, for sickness and in health moment. Whatever those moments were, how did you say this is still worth fighting for? 
Um, so and was that led by you or her? That was led by her. That was not me. What happened was this is gonna bless us. What happened was my wife went and got therapy first, mm. and because men are competitive and achievement driven, oh, you're not gonna out counsel me. <laughs> so I went and got therapy too, and it worked. <laughs> That they work. You ain't gonna out counsel. You're me. not gonna out. You're not gonna out fix yourself. Me, right? You're not gonna out do that. You know. And um, my wife is so brilliant and so wise. What she did she, later, she sat down and she said, "Dave, I could have manipulated you to change. Mm. I knew how to do it. Yeah, I knew what to do. But I wasn't gonna do that. If I wanted you to change on your own, mm. what she did was she initiated the process because she knew I wouldn't hear her, but I would see her." So she went and got therapy. I would see her get up in the morning and meet with her counselor in our living room on Zoom. And I would walk by. <laughs> then she had her little books and notebooks. And what she did was she would leave them out and open. <laughs> you not go out, fix yourself me. <laughs> so I started leaving my Bible out and open. I know I'm reading the Bible, right? Oh God. And it just began to, we, we started seeing change. Can you, I don't know. <laughs> You're trying to compete with her? Yeah, I'm competing with fixing me. Sometimes I'm healing better than yeah, you. I'm, I'm healing, healing faster, faster than you. I'm healing faster than you. Isn't that the silliest thing? Just stupid. But that thing worked out. Doc. It worked out. We hear, we are, we are happier than we've ever been. And now I call the counselor for us for maintenance. Good. Right? Like, no, we have a counselor. We good. <laughs> Just silly. What, what was that? <laughs> what was that turning point where where y'all said where you just said, "All right, let me quit being silly," and and you actually was like, yeah. "Listen, this is working." What happened was, man, I saw her. Um, I w I found myself. Huh, this is gonna sound so crazy. I found myself laying up while she was asleep, staring at her, <laughs> and thanking God for her. Mm. And, I, and I hadn't done that for years. I found myself coming straight home from work. Mm. I got to get to the house. Cause I want to be with her. Mm. I found myself calling her throughout the day. There it is. Texting like, you good? You made it. And I knew. <laughs> and that, <laughs> and Michael you, Jordan worked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you've maintenance that thing, right. Yeah. Then something going to be waiting on you when you get home. Yeah. <laughs> that thing will work. The work will work if you work it. Right. <laughs> so the, the work started working and I said, I'm going to keep working. It's okay. Work. And it worked out. I've been incentivized to do the right yes, thing. Yes, sir. I've been incentivized. <laughs> So now what happens is, man, my wife, so we have, our marriage is really now an out, an, it's an event. Yeah. It's a, it's a competition. We out serve each other. There it is. The way that we know we're upset with each other is we don't let each other serve. Right? So she'll say, do you want me to run your bath for you? Nah, I got it. Hey girl, what's wrong? <laughs> what's wrong? You ain't let me run your bath. What's wrong? Right? And so now. That is funny. That's the cue. Like, if I don't want you to make my plate. I don't want you to run my water. Something wrong. Isn't that crazy how I just flipped the other way? <laughs> yeah. So now it's like, yeah, now it's what we do. And mm. it, it works. And But the, the thing to that is she's no longer impressed by that. She's not impressed by bath water. She's not impressed by having her towel warmed up in the in the in the dryer so it's warm when she that's not impressive. Hold on, hold on, Dave. Hold on, hold on. You said you go warm up the bath towel. Now, put that thing in the dryer while she's in the tub. So when she gets out, it's warm. She's not impressed though. That does not impress her. So there's some women right now to be like she, they they turn into their mate right now. I wish you would warm up. I my wish towel. you just sit on it. <laughs> I wish right? you sit. Wish you rubbing your hand yeah. like this or do something. That's not impressive, right? The heart stuff is impressive to her. Not the that external stuff. She doesn't care. What's her love language? Phys uh, quality time. Quality time. Yeah. She and yours? Uh, away. <laughs> Did you say oh? <laughs> away alone? That's your my love, love language. You can make up your own your, yeah, your quality time by yourself. My love language is alone, King. That's my love language. Just leave me alone. So I gotta put mine aside. You gotta put yours aside. Mm -hmm. And so now you gotta meet her on a heart level and not an acts of service level. That's right. Yeah. Is that more challenging for you? It is. It's it's becoming easier, but it is challenging because I have to feel all the time, and I don't want to feel. He said all the time. Yeah, I just want to be on autopilot. So when I come home and I have to observe her face, her posture, I've got to look at how she's moving and identify something's wrong, right? <sighs> All right. Right, and so now I got to get into serving. Serving, well, yeah. So no, it's a blessing though, King. It's a blessing. So what advice would you say to men, and you touched on it earlier, 
But to single men mm -hmm. who say, I'm better off single, all the stuff you said is nice, and I realize that's a lot of work. Sure. I'm just gonna stay single because yeah. that's just that's I, nobody ain't got time for all that. Sure. Women should be able to articulate what they feel and they grown. Yeah. So if they if they got a problem with something, they need to be able to say I got a problem with. It. Nobody ain't got time to do all these guessing games. I, I'm just gonna stay single and worry about me, and I'll just smash whatever woman that comes along my path. We'll have a bunch of situationships and all that, but sure. I ain't finna, I ain't finna be dying daily like you yeah, talking yeah. about. That don't make sense. I say thank you. I appreciate that because. I want to honor you for acknowledging I'm not ready for it. There it is. Right. Because what, when you don't do that, we have to now fix what you've done. Ooh! Right. I've got to work harder now to prove that you're wrong. And I don't want to do that. So thank you, sir, for staying single so that I don't have to outwork the mess you've created. Well, that's not what I expected, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what would you say? No, but, I let like me it. ask you this question. No, let me ask you this question. Ask me. King, go ahead. This is not my show. All not right. Show. Go I'm ask gonna, me a question. I have one question. You still single. Yes. And you got, I know you got options. Yeah. I got, I got. No, don't say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. I, I got opportunities. I don't have options. Okay. You got opportunities. So opportunities are, it's, it's, it's a lot. I meet a lot of amazing women. A lot of women that I believe are wifey material. Mm -hmm. But the option, once I find the option, which is the woman that I believe God designed oh, for me, so good. then I will pull the trigger and it will happen fast. So you have opportunities. I have opportunities. And we will define the option. Yes. Once we meet her. There it oh, is. Oh, I just there it changed, is. you just changed my whole little vibe. There, there it is. Because that's the reality. Because a lot of times people are like, I know you meet every time I have an amazing woman on my podcast, they'd be like, That's your wife. That's your wife. And I say, if I married all the women that y'all said that, that was my wife, my wife I'd yeah. be in a whole polyamorous relationship. Wow. I'd be a polygamist. It'd be, I'll walk around and have 10 women in wow. tow. You know, and I, but, but what they're seeing is, they're seeing things that me and the guests have in alignment where they go, y'all would make a great couple. But what y'all are getting a snapshot of is that one hour interview yeah. and don't know some of the idiosyncrasies that I possess and some of the stuff that she has that brings us total you know, in totality where we are able to function to death, do we part? Because we have some great, you can be, and I always say, look at your own life mm. where people that you, well, people that you've met, uh, and I'm talking to the women or whatever that say that's your wife or whatever, mm -hmm. that these are guys that you met in the first two dates, you're like, oh my God, this is the man of my dream. Yes, sir. But as things begin to unravel and unpack, it didn't go nowhere. Yeah. You might have had a boyfriend even for a whole year. You didn't yeah. make it to fiance. Yeah. You know, you may have been with somebody that actually made it under the title of wife or husband, but y'all didn't make it past that. Y'all didn't get to death. Do we part? Wow. And so it's certain things that we look at in people that uh, we go, we can make it work. Wow. And we find out that it just didn't quite work out that way. Mm. And so I'm, I'm, I'm being very, um, I ain't, ain't going to say I'm looking through, through, life with a fine tooth comb, but it is some things that I know that I desire, some non-negotiables that I have. Uh, a woman definitely has to be secure because of the level of platform that I have. Mm. I can't be with somebody that's really insecure and be like, well, who is she? Why is she smiling at you? I'd be like, girl, I'm not, now nah, I'm not finna go through that. You know what I'm that. saying? And uh, it just, no. So it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff that I've never ever articulated because I'll never tell people what I'm looking for because I've dealt with a narcissistic woman before and she became everything that she thought I wanted, Jesus. you know, just hit it all. And then you get with the person and that's, that's a different level. What and I'm not talking about my ex-wife. I'm talking about the woman, the pain that led to this podcast. Amen. Amen. Mm -mm. Dave, I went, I went through some pain, brother. I need you to just, mm -hmm. just breathe. I, I'm trying to brother. Just breathe. Take another sip. Oh, okay. Let me get another sip. <laughs> What I hear you saying is, so what's interesting is if a woman is sitting here, she's mm -hmm. here to agree on camera. Ooh. Most relationships we look at, they agree on camera. If I'm looking at Instagram, they look amazing <laughs> on, camera. on camera. Until you get behind scene, lights go off and the cameras are turned off and realize you are hell. Yeah. Right? On wheels. On wheels, man. So I, I celebrate you for saying I'm not willing to agree on camera and disagree off camera. Because I got to get to death do we part. Wow. Like, and I know how much work marriage takes. And I knew also the stuff that 
was, and I don't call them red flags. It's just where you're not in alignment. Yes, sir. You know, and you know that at the very beginning, and then you still say, I do, hoping that those things change. And in both ways, she was looking for things to change in me and things that have changed. I, I, I'll say this, and I normally don't talk uh, specifics about my past marriage because I've, I've always wanted her to be on the podcast, cover. just like you said, yeah, and tell your story. Yeah. Um, but I will say this. Um, one of the things when I stepped outside of my marriage, I wanted to talk about that. You did that too. Oh yeah, I cheated on. I cheated. You too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I cheated I was on my the wife. Only one, King. Oh no, you ain't the only one. We 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 in the cheaters club together. Okay. Okay. So we in the cheaters club together, and I stepped outside of my marriage. Isn't that crazy? We step outside of marriage and still want the the wife to have sex with us, even That's though we violated nother, that whole security. To, no, we gonna, we go ain't ahead, gonna talk about tell that. Your story. Yeah, we ain't gonna talk about that. We gonna stay right here. So I cheated on my ex wife, and I um. I want to talk about it. I said, I got to talk about this. I got to uncover myself. And yes, I need sir. to talk about this. And hopefully I could give men context and reference so that they don't go and violate what I violated. And, like, and we always say, well, you should have known better. No, I didn't know what led to that. And so mm. after I learned what led to it, this codependency that I had, that, that I said, I got to talk about it. I just got to talk about it. And she was like, no, I don't want you ever talking about that. Mm. And she said, uh, because I don't want to fend off comments from my family about why I'm choosing to stay. Yes, sir. Okay, I respect that. But deep down inside, that purpose that was inside of me was being stifled because my purpose is this. Yes, sir. So then what happened is, is, is uh, unbeknownst to me at the time, that uh, where the Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love God and the called according yes, to sir. his purpose, the calling still had to come into fruition. And so the marriage ended up uh, failing, but now here I am able to talk about it and people being set free and delivered and men DMing me saying, I'm going through the same thing with my wife right now. Uh, how do I, how do I cover this? How do I restore trust in our marriage mm. and all this stuff? And I wanted to do that way back then. Yes, sir. And so when I go back to purpose is that I have to be very, very, very specific that whoever I choose, our purpose has to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I don't even call it a wife anymore. I call it my purpose partner mm -hmm. because I said I divorced a wife before, but I'll never divorce my purpose. I'm going to do this. <clears throat> I'm going to give you credit one time, King. I'm going to say my brother taught me this. I will. Uh, you can divorce a wife. You can never divorce purpose. I'm going to give you credit once. And you, then you're going to take it? I'm going to take it. <laughs> You're going to hear it again. The second time, just say, nah, that's his. Nah, that's his. He the, the third time is going to be yours. Yeah. Man, that's so good, man. Because that's what this journey has taught me. Because I've been, because the purpose still became manifested in the podcast that's touching people all across the world. Yep. Because now I can authentically live who I am, flaws and all. I can honestly uncover myself and say, listen, I'm not somebody that's trying to tell people. And what I've done is I don't try to tell people what to do. Yes, I just live out loud. And I'm, I share, the Bible says that people will overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb. So just by sharing our testimony, Yes, sir. people are being redeemed and healed and set free and delivered and making better choices. Mm. And so I said, I'm not going to sit in the seat and try to tell people what to do, what not to do. I'm just going to sh show my scars like Jesus that's did. Right. And hopefully you can see the scars in my hand and be like, that's what redemption looks like. That's right. And that's how I live my life. And so I definitely want to link up with a woman uh, that joins forces with me and she's she uncovers herself and she says, hey, listen, this is my story. This is my journey. And we live in this beautiful mess that God has created a message in and we're able to fulfill God's promise and, and heal people through our lives. And that's wisdom. That's all I want. That's wisdom. That's man. all I want, David. I think more people, to your point, more people are committed to marriage. And so I tell people that you, you should let, be, don't commit to your marriage, commit to the institution. There it is. Of marriage, right? That means that hell or high water, I'm sticking with what God said. That's what he said. And we work through it. Now, that doesn't mean I remain a fool. Yeah. Right. If you don't want to work on what we have, then one of us has to go. But yeah. if we're committed to the institution as opposed to one another, it becomes easier because you are going to fail me one day. I'm not going to like you. Having said that, I think every couple should ask. The, well, not every couple, but I, it's it's. If you ask, have I married the wrong person? That's not a, that's a safe, that's a safe question. Yeah. You have to ask, have I married the wrong person? I think yeah. every couple should ask that at one point in their life. And I yeah. think you will, you will get to the point where you ask, is this, did I make a bad yeah. choice? Is this a wrong yeah. decision? You move beyond that. Right. And that's, that's a starting point to many cases to, to restoration. 
There it is. Yep. Husband, boy, them people ain't gonna like what you mm -mm. said about it. it. Ain't fair. It's I'm fair. just still, I'm still stewing with that about it not being fair. Uh, but I do love the fact that you said that when a man isn't ready, and if he can identify that there's no value in marriage. Don't go damage a woman mm -mm. taking trying to give her what she's saying she wants, mm -mm. but you never want to give no. uh, because that's how um, women are marrying broken boys. And if I look back, I was a broken Jesus. boy, not even know it, knowing that I was broken, Me too. trying to play the role of a husband. But yeah. I don't even know how to play the role of a man yet. And isn't that crazy? We'll you, throw titles on geez. each other. And one thing about uh, any job, my son just got a job um, last his first day was yesterday um, at Brahms. It's an mm, ice cream shop yes here. Sir. And the first thing he was telling me is that uh, this whole week is training. And they teaching them the ways of how Brahms run things or whatnot. We get married. We just we just jump into it, and we have no training manual. We have no, no instruction. We never seen it led by a husband. We never saw our fathers be a great husband. And we just, and that's even if our father was even present, and we're thrust into the highest position that you could ever be in. Wow. And and because we're we're the reflection of Christ to the church. Wow. And we get thr thrusted into this highest position and we have no manual. And people say, well, you have the Bible. But if you don't even know what scriptures go look into and how to decipher it and break it down on what role a husband is supposed to play in this household, wow. then we just be like. And truthfully speaking, a lot of people still don't even believe in the Bible. So then you're wow. trying to tell people, go look at this manual. And they like, that Bible, that ain't got nothing to do with me right now being a husband. Would you say that the role of a husband is, is even a higher role than the role of a pastor? 100%. Because it's the Bible says we are the priest of our homes. And so Oof. if we're a priest, a priest, oh, I'm, try, I'm trying not to preach Oof. right now. But we don't understand that. We get so mad at our women running to the church because it looks like, oh, this is good. We get mad at women running to the church because are like, oh, you just running down there? And this is that old school stuff that I used to watch. Is you just running down there and that man is trying to take your money? Are oh, you listening to anything that that pastor say? You listen to anything that that pastor says? But you're supposed to be the priest of the home. So at the end of the day, if you're shepherding your household correctly, she'll be listening to everything that you say. And I think a lot of us black men don't go to church and aren't better husbands because if I didn't have an earthly father, why would I trust a heavenly father? I can't there it see, is. Right. And why would I trust this man who all he does is make my wife cry <laughs> and make her give her money and all of her time? Yep. That's scary. It's very right? scary. You, so you have to know you. You got to be secure in you in order to shepherd these people. When you grew up, when you got married, uh, were y'all heavily invested in church? Man, we were heavily, yes. Because we you were. grew up in church, so church I, wasn't a foreign I, thing for you. It wasn't a foreign thing. When we got married, this is the danger was I was just starting out in ministry. The problem was I was very effective with people, not effective with her. Mm. The greater challenge was they would begin celebrating me more than she would. There it is. Oh, yes. yes because yes, I yes. was good on stage and not good at home. Right? So I'm looking at her like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. They love me. Right. And so what I did was I now began to turn my attention toward outside the applause. Yep. And that became dangerous. And that's why I said my struggle was codependency. Yes, sir. I would I would turn to my ex wife and I'll do something that's absolutely amazing. And yes, sir. Uh, if I do say so myself. Yes, sir. And I'd be like, What'd you think about that? Oh, that's cool. I said, Ain't this Sir. Like, did you just say cool? Sir. Do you realize I just moved heaven and earth? I split sir. the Red Sea and you say cool. Sir. And then everybody else outside be like, oh my God, you're sir. so amazing as this. And I was like, well, well, goodness gracious. And then that's when I started, like you said, start looking externally for what I wanted internally. And then my attention was turned outside, and that's what led to me going outside. For we it. didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. And forever's not impressed. Forever's not impressed. There's a different culture and code for forever that fans don't have to adhere to. Talk about it. And so she wasn't, I'm not impressed, sir. Pay these bills. <laughs> That's cute. Hold on. You said it's a different code that forever operates in that fans don't. What is that code? Fans are so temporal. Fans are only here for victories. Forever's here for defeats. David? It's facts. Do you hear what you just said? I did. Fans only celebrate in victories. I'm only as good as my last trophy. Forever says, whether you have a trophy or not, I'm with you. Now, what Forever also says, if you do not have trophies, you have to level up. I'm going to be here, but level up. I'll never be a fan of yours. I will always be your forever. God, dog. 
And we, we marry fans, bro, and then wonder why they don't celebrate us when we're not winning. Because they're not, they're not forever. They're a fan. I can't keep doing this podcast. <laughs> Rian, how many minutes we got left? He wearing me out. Two. All right, we good. We good. Oh, you wearing me out. I'm finna cry. I'm finna lay on this floor. I don't know what to do me with all these kids. motions. Because I love it because we're literally talking about stuff that was never told to us. Same here. Can't, never hear told. This. Yeah. And then you go, you, you take on this role of husband and you're supposed to try to mitigate the damage that you're causing somebody else that you become one with. And so whatever trauma that you had before your I do and whatever trauma she had before the I do, whatever Brother. insecurity you had and insecurity she had, y'all become one. And now y'all sharing those insecurities, those traumas, those feelings of unworthiness, those codependent see issues y'all sharing that as one and then the closest person to us that begins to be a mirror and a reflection of who we are we want to turn our back on and be like no 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 you're you're revealing my ugliness and i don't like that he told us to be fruitful and multiply so even in my insecurities we will always multiply what we bring and i will always be I, whenever i impregnate her she will always give birth to what i impregnate her with mm. right so if it's insecurity we're gonna have just babies of insecurity just giving birth to all types of Insecurity, just offspring of stupidity. <laughs> it's facts. It's facts, man. Is it offspring of stupidity? Yeah, we're raising stupids, right? <laughs> stupid decisions, stupid choices, stupids, right? We give birth to stupids. Oh God! So men have been challenged today. Mm -hmm. Men have been challenged to uh, to accept that it's not fair. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be fair. It's okay that it's not fair. So, and we are expected to level up and we shepherd that which we want to produce. And so as men, if we want a home that cultivates love and, and, and compassion and feelings of worthiness, then we serve our way to that. My last statement, and this will get me in trouble <clears throat> and I will probably not be back. So let's just prepare ourselves. Let's prepare. Everybody. Sir. If you ever feel like your marriage is fair, you are not man enough. Okay, so um, you yeah. just you just want to just keep on starting stuff, huh? No, I'm just I, no, but you, but it, it was fine at first. You was already stepping on. We toes. were good. Talk yeah. feathers, yeah. babies. But now you're gonna sit there and say they're not man enough. No, I'm saying if you ever feel like it's fair, like you're getting it's fair, it's equal. You you need to level up. Mm. You're not serving hard enough. You're still alive. You got to die. You got to die. You have to die. If you feel it's fair, you have to die. You haven't died. What does dying look like? Her first then me. Not me first then her. Her first then me. Give her the best piece of meat. Give her the biggest cup of coffee. You take what's left. Oh, shoot. That's not they, fair. Nobody want to do that. No, nobody. nobody. You nobody ain't finna be doing all that now. No, you have to, and you have to do it subconsciously, and not make a big deal out of it. She must never know you gave her the best piece of meat. You know. If you can tell her you gave her the best piece of meat, it's still an, it's fair. <laughs> sacrifice does not have to be seen to be felt. Ooh, sacrifice doesn't have to be seen to be felt. Yeah. So if you hear that again, just say that, you know I'm 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 on that. How about that then? We're going to steal it. each other's yeah, stuff. We're going to steal, steal it. it. Yeah. All right. Well, it is what it is. Yeah, then. it is what All it right. is. So I'm just going to steal it. Yep. Okay. So I sacrifice don't have to be seen to be felt. That's not All right. So it is what it is. David, mm -hmm. how can people connect with you? Thank you, man. First of all, thank you for having me. Man, it's been amazing. When I say you poured into me, I'm going to watch this again. I'm going to make notes and I'm going to create a whole course with it. And I'm As you it. should. As you should. <laughs> Man, follow me on Instagram at David Burris Global. Facebook is David Anthony Burris or D. Anthony Burris, I believe. Uh, and I do run an academy that we just teach people how to do purpose and yeah. relationships. Um, TheActivateNation.com. TheActivateNation.com. Yes, sir. Again, I've heard amazing things about uh, your academy. Keep doing what you're doing. What, you. Made you, what made you create that? I got fired <laughs> <laughs> during the pandemic. That's what made uh, God said, no, you, you got to do it. I got, they laid me off and I said, I'm not going on another, another job interview. I was already doing the work, but yeah. um, now I just, I love my job. I enjoy what I do. So and I don't even feel like working no more. It does, does not feel like work. Feel like straight fulfilling purpose. It's a, this, I'm working. This is amazing. I get to do this all yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what kind of testimonies have you received uh, since 
being fully invested in this work, this sure, purpose work. <clears throat> what I, so I got into this so that I really wanted to create a place where singles could meet, get this rich information, be taught and go get married. Yeah. The greatest testimony is that singles are saying, I'm not getting married. The couples are saying we were dating, but we're going to go ahead and break up. Right. Because they're, what they're realizing is I'm, this is not for me. Right. So breakups and staying single have been my greatest testimony. Boy, that's about the opposite thing. That I know. <laughs> I know it, King. I came so they can get together and got Sounds like a failure, David. Sounds like everything you did I has know. been a failure. You ever I got you, you started something for people to get married. Right. Now you're making people don't want to get married. Right. You got couples wanting to break up. Yes. What in the world? That's what yeah. And it's working, man. And I love it. <laughs> it's not working, David. I it's know. not working. That it's is not crazy. working and it's working. And I love it. Yeah, that thing ain't working. <laughs> That's what makes it work. That's what makes it work, yeah. boy. I love it. I love yep. it. I love it. So, man, listen, it's been an honor talking to you, brother. You know, I could talk to you for hours. Nice. And hopefully we can get you back on a live so you can defend everything you said. Yes, sir, please. Because <laughs> yeah. they coming. They coming. No, they you coming. hear it. Yeah. 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 I'm, I, I already got some reels I'm going to drop from this, this yes, episode. Sir. And dude's going to be like, oh, oh, they're going to get mad. They're yeah. going to get so mad. And we're going to love it. We're going to. Yeah. We're going to just let them let the women and the men debate each other it's in the comments. The and they're going to say, I don't want to be together. They, they, we just, we're going to start seeing more of it, more breakups. It's and if people could just go ahead and take the medicine and level up yep. and be fathered through examples like that's this. Good, man. Because that's, I got a DM from this 18 year old uh, young king that brought tears to my eyes. He DM'd me last week, and I had met him one day at Chipotle. He ran, oh, this is so dope. I love this little dude. So I ran into him at Chipotle, and um, he said, I know who you are. And I said, who? He said, dear future wifey. And I was like, you 18. How, yeah, I was like, how you watching a podcast? I said, like, you 18 years old. He said, he said, yeah, but you're teaching me how to do relationships right. And I'm like, 18. I said, what? He said, so I don't have to make some of the same mistakes that I saw other people make. 18. 18. Then he DM'd me last week and said, you don't know this, but you're fathering me. Oh, that right there brought tears Ooh. down my face. I said, say, say, little dude, like you, 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 gonna you, stop mess, you <laughs> messed me up. You <laughs> messed about, me you're up. Playing. We was at Chipotle and he said, can I, pop, can, can I pay for your meal? And he's this a, was, so this was after you met? After I met, so, so I went, you were now I, mentoring this young man. No, I haven't. I, okay. I, when I met him at Chipotle, it was the first time me meeting him. And but he, he knew offered who to you pay were. for food. Yes, he knew who wow. I was then. And then he offered to pay for my meal. And I'm like, well, you a college student. You can't afford, can't, like, let me pay for your food. He said, no, sir. He understood no, the value. Let me, let me pay for yours. Yeah. And I'm looking at this young dude and I'm like, you understand, like you understand what that it. is. Like you, you he get it. it. And so when he DM me last week and he said, uh, your father and me. And I said, okay, but leave me alone. Like, you better quit. You better quit playing with me, yeah. little boy. I don't, hey. <laughs> and so I told him to come in uh, in the next couple of weeks and we're going to record this video because I want to, uh, it's this project that I'm working on. But yeah, that blessed my heart. Jesus. And so if that young 18 year old boy can get what this looks like and what this is supposed to do, um, then us grown men need to be able to take that medicine and say, hey, listen, if servitude looks like this, just 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 try it. Try it and see just how it works. It. See whatever woman that you're with right now, serve her and and just test it. Test what me and David are talking about and see what fruit come from that. This one guy, a lie. one guy reached out. He said, man, I, I need help with my marriage. I said, okay, well, you guys going to counseling? He said, yeah. I said, well, tell me about it. Well, we only went once. It didn't work. <laughs> That's what they said. Man, you didn't go to counseling, man. You didn't go to counseling. He said, we're once. It, it didn't work. Once and it didn't work, King. So, gentlemen, I, I suggest you try it. Give it. What I, I want to challenge every man to give, um, give, extreme service for the next 30 days extreme service i Ex want you to break that down real quick before we let them go i'm gonna use a different word extravagant service right? okay what does that look like what that means is um here's what it feels like uh when you feel uh when you feel like you don't want to do it do it 10 times harder oh god dog no. yeah so <sighs> your goal your your goal for this next 30 days is to anticipate the need there it is that's what i want you to do i want you to think about her day Think about what she has going on this week. And I want you to get ahead of it. So if you know every morning she puts her briefcase by the door, you do it first. There it is. If you know you're going to make yourself a plate, make hers too. Yeah. Everything you would do for you, do it for her for the next 30 days. And then if that if you don't see a change in her after 30 days. Yeah, get rid of her. Get rid uh, anyway. Wait a minute. <laughs> 
Hey, hey that's, that's what your academy promotes. I did you not get, say that's what your academy promotes. I you gonna get rid of her because it didn't ain't working. Say that. Dang, God. <laughs> it's really not gonna work. Now you about to make me lose every ounce of income I got. I just said, join the academy. Join the academy. Yeah. And if you do all that for 30 days, it don't work. You got the wrong one. You got the wrong one. Uh, you got the wrong one. We're going to trade out. And we're gonna, I'm going to have a dating show, a speed dating show, and we'll gladly have you as okay, one man. of the participants. You're to get me in trouble. <laughs> I got to go home to this. got to go home for this. <laughs> Shout out to your amazing woman. I heard you talk about how brilliant she is. Of course. And so uh, definitely that's amazing. For my for my third closing, because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a preacher now. I have three closings. <laughs> Baptist. Yeah. When you talk about her brilliance, mm -hmm. I want you to tell me what makes her so brilliant. Um, what she does is my wife. This is one of the things she does that's so brilliant. She doesn't command. She she suggests. Right. She makes no commands. She makes a thousand suggestions. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> No, I don't think. Have you have you can have, have you, you considered, considered this? Have you thought about doing it this way, right? And what she knows is men don't take commands well. She there takes it is. great. We we take great suggestions. So because we got to be the one that we we, we chose. What yeah, it was. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to process what you're saying, right? <laughs> Thirty seconds later, and you know that's a good idea. <laughs> we gonna do that, right? You know, I think we should. Uh, I think we should do this. Yeah, and she's like, I, I think just, we should sell that and buy this. Let me. You know what I think we should do is sell that and do this. No, that's what I think we should do. That's what I think. She's like, yeah, yeah thank yeah, you for coming up with yeah. that. And she, and she never, the other thing she does, man, is she covers me in, she covers me in public and, and corrects me in private. There it is. Yeah, that makes her brilliant. I've mm, dropped so good. many balls and in public, she just smiles. This nigga is <laughs> crazy. And in private, sir, don't do that again. Yeah. Yep. So she's, she's amazing. I can go on and on. I love that. When I say I love it, I love it, I love it because I believe in giving our women flowers. Uh, and then so men can actually hear that we can praise our women publicly because uh, I'll be hearing some crazy stuff. I got a lot of female friends. They be like, their men feel like they can't give them compliments because they'll go to their head. Huh? I'm like, what? what? <laughs> so you want all the other men to give your woman compliments so it can go to her head? Like, they be the last one to tell her she's beautiful. Why don't you ever tell me you're pretty? Girl, you know you're pretty. You probably hear it from everybody else. Shoot, I want to be the loudest one saying you're beautiful. Forget about you hearing well, from anyone else. When we got married, we became one. There it is. I'm doing me the favor by complimenting you. Mm -hmm. I'm doing me the favor by running your back. It's me. Right, I'm doing it for me. How's it gonna go to? It's going to my head. It's going to, it's going to our head. Yeah, our head. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's a crazy ideology, and that's why we have to unpack this and heal that brokenness. Oh, like I said, Dave, we could talk forever, man. Listen, y'all give it up for my boy David Burris. It's been mm. an amazing, amazing episode. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, man. Thank you, Thank you. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into child protective services in 2015. My nephew. Black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care, should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. 
Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, I really enjoyed talking to my brother, David Burris. Man, it's, I thank God for opportunities like this where we are challenged as men. So hopefully this episode reaches a lot of my brethren so that we can be challenged to become the mighty men of valor that the Bible speaks of. Uh, this road of masculinity isn't easy. It's a road that is less traveled, unfortunately. And um, as David said, it's a road that's unfair. We don't get the kudos or the accolades or the affirmation when we do a great thing. We didn't have father. Our father's there to congratulate us or say, I'm proud, son. But our heavenly father is always rooting for us. He's in the stands. And the stands are <laughs> up high. And he looks low, and he's encouraging us to become the best versions of ourselves. Here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, I will be your householder. My foundation is in Christ. My faith in him is the band that will hold our house together. The Lord has equipped me with the strength to protect our home against all spiritual attacks. No weapon form shall prosper. Please note that I can't stop the weapon from forming, but I can ensure it doesn't prosper. I will help you reimagine the role of a man. I'm not sure if you witness a father being present or one that didn't cherish his mandate. I will either bring revitalization to your hope in the male species or a continuation with a bit of multiplication to the good deeds you've already experienced by us. My love, will wrap around our household and I will husband you. Love you until I take my last breath. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently and don't stop loving. 
Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wife YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.